<laughs> Thank you so much. It is wonderful to be here and see so many friends. Now, we may not have always agreed on every detail, but we've always shared an unwavering, unshakable commitment to our alliance and to Israel's future as a secure and democratic homeland for the Jewish people. It would be a serious mistake for the United States to abandon our responsibilities or cede the mantle of leadership for global peace and security to anyone else. Three evolving threats. Iran's continued aggression, a rising tide of extremism across a wide arc of instability, and the growing effort to delegitimize Israel on the world stage are converging to make the U.S.-Israel alliance more indispensable than ever. We have to combat all these trends with even more intense security and diplomatic cooperation. The United States and Israel must be closer than ever, stronger than ever, and more determined than ever to prevail against our common adversaries and to advance our shared values. Palestinian leaders need to stop inciting violence stop celebrating terrorists as martyrs, and stop paying rewards to their families. Are we prepared to take the U.S.-Israel alliance to the next level? This relationship has always been stronger and deeper than the headlines might lead you to believe. Our work together to develop the Iron Dome saved many Israeli lives when Hamas rockets began to fly. And if I'm fortunate enough to be elected president, the United States will reaffirm we have a strong and enduring national interest in Israel's security. And we will never allow Israel's adversaries to think a wedge can be driven between us. America, America needs an Israel strong enough to deter and defend against its enemies, strong enough to work with us to tackle shared challenges, and strong enough to take bold steps in the pursuit of peace. We must take our alliance to the next level I hope a new 10-year defense memorandum of understanding is concluded as soon as possible to meet Israel's security needs far into the future. That will also send a clear message to Israel's enemies that the United States and Israel stand together united. It's also why, as President, I will make a firm commitment to ensure Israel maintains its qualitative military edge. The United States should provide Israel with the most sophisticated defense technology so it can deter and stop any threats. That includes bolstering Israeli missile defenses with new systems like the Arrow 3 and David Sling, and we should work together to develop better tunnel detection, technology to prevent arms smuggling, kidnapping, and terrorist attacks. One of the first things I'll do in office is invite the Israeli Prime Minister to visit the White House. And I will send a delegation from the Pentagon and the Joint Chiefs to Israel for early consultations boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement known as BDS. Time when anti-Semitism is on the rise across the world, especially in Europe, we must repudiate all efforts to malign, isolate, and undermine Israel and the Jewish people. 
Anti-Semitism has no place in any civilized society, not in America, not in Europe, not anywhere. Now, all of this work, defending Israel's legitimacy, expanding security and economic ties, taking our alliance to the next level, depends on electing a president with a deep personal commitment to Israel's future as a secure, democratic Jewish state and to America's responsibilities as a global leader. For the security of Israel and the world, we need America to remain a respected global leader, committed to defending and advancing the international order, an America able to block efforts to isolate or attack Israel. The alternative is unthinkable. We need steady hands, not a president who says he's neutral on Monday, pro-Israel on Tuesday, and who knows what on Wednesday, because everything's negotiable. Well, my friends, Israel's security is non-negotiable. I feel so strongly that America can't ever be neutral when it comes to Israel's security or survival. We can't be neutral when rockets rain down on residential neighborhoods, when civilians are stabbed in the street, when suicide bombers target the innocent. Some things aren't negotiable. And anyone who doesn't understand that has no business being our president. We will have the strength and commitment to confront the adversaries that threaten us, especially Iran. For many years, we've all been rightly focused on the existential danger of Iran acquiring a nuclear weapon. After all, this remains an extremist regime that threatens to annihilate Israel. That's why I led the diplomacy to impose crippling sanctions and force Iran to the negotiating table, and why I ultimately supported the agreement that has put a lid on its nuclear program. <laughs> Thank you so much.